Today we're creating a seamless repeat pattern design in Procreate, bursting with lemons. The color palette for this project is free as always. Just tap on the link in the video description and you can download and install it. I'm going to start by creating a brand new canvas. I've listed my specs on screen and let's begin. This week's tutorial is brought to you by Envato Elements, which is kind of like the Netflix of graphic design. They have tens of thousands of resources available to artists, including stock photos, presentation templates, audio tracks, logos, fonts, and my favorite, Procreate brushes. We're actually going to be using a set from their library for this week's tutorial, and they've generously offered every Tuesday subscribers with a 70% off coupon, which makes it less than $10 a month to try out. It's limited time though, so tap on the link in the video description to grab your coupon, and let's go download our brushes. Let's start by grabbing those brushes from Envato Elements. So once you arrive at Envato Elements, just come up here and in the search bar, type in Scribbles Procreate brushes. And under this add-ons category, it's the one with the red background. So just tap on that. And then we're just going to download this and install it in Procreate. So then I'll meet you in Procreate. Okay, I'm back in Procreate and I've got those brushes added in right here. So let's first apply a background color and I'm going to keep my background color separate from the main background color layer. It helps me to stay more organized and keep this layer separate from my design. So on this layer one, I'm going to just color drop this very first color on the second row. So just drag that in and I'm going to create a brand new layer right above it and paint in my lemons. So I'm going to grab the very first yellow color on the top row and and I've got this number 21 brush selected and I'm just going to paint in three lemons here. So I'm going to do one that's kind of upright. I'll have one that's turned this way and another one down here filling this out. So they're a little bit different in size and position or orientation. So once you have your ovals up at the top, we're gonna paint the top part of the lemon and then the bottom part of the lemon and if it's not feeling right usually all you have to do is make it a little fatter and then it'll look more like a lemon so these are pretty pretty simple to draw I've got my three lemons and if you want to reposition any of them like I think I want this one to move over here a little bit I'm just going to grab my selection tool make sure freehand is selected and nothing else down here is selected so I'm going to select that and then just move it over maybe rotate it just slightly now is the time to make these adjustments before we add in everything else the next thing I'm going to do is paint some leaves on top of the lemons so I'm going to create a brand new layer I'm going to switch my brush let's grab number 13 and I'm going to first grab my green color and on each one of these I'm going to put a big leaf, pretty basic, scribble it in. It doesn't have to be all the way filled in unless you want it to be. It's totally up to you how you want to draw this. I like this messier, sketchier look so that's why I usually leave mine open. All right, I've got my first green leaves in there. I'm going to create a brand new layer. Drag this layer underneath the lemon layer, and we're going to put some background leaves just to create a sense of depth, even though we have a flat style illustration. So we can do that with color and layering. I'm going to select the third color on the second row and put some background leaves. So you can see they're appearing behind the top leaf and behind the lemon. So I've got an instant impression of depth right there by doing that handy little design trick. Now that I've got those leaves in there, let's paint some highlight spots on our lemons. So I'm going to come to my lemon layer, create a brand new layer right above it, grab the second color on the top row, and I'm going to switch this brush all the way down to this number one brush and just put some dots on the side, have some of them come out towards the middle a little bit more. You can put as many or as few as you'd like. And then I want to create one more sense of depth right here with a faux shadow coming off of the leaf where it's overlapping the lemon itself. So I'm going to create a brand new layer right above the lemon layer and I'm going to apply clipping mask to it. So tap in the layer thumbnail and choose clipping mask. I'm going to choose the same color as my background color, which is that darkest green, the first one on the second row. I'm going to switch my brush to number 14 and just put a little bit of a shadow underneath where this green leaf is hanging. Totally optional. I just like the effect that that has. And I'm overlapping some of my dots right here and I don't want that. So I'm going to go to my dots and erase away the ones that are being overlapped and I'll just repaint those in. 
Now we can start painting in some of our background elements. So I'm going to create a brand new layer up at the top. I'm going to grab my lightest blue color. Let's grab the number one brush for this. And I'm just painting in some really simple branches. And I'm not going to paint too many of these because I want to leave room for some of the other leafy elements that I plan on adding to my background. And I also leave these in the messy, sketchy style. I'm going to add in another color now, so create a brand new layer. I'm going to grab the third color on the second row and add in some more of the same type of leafy elements. And for this one, I'll alternate between having three leaves and two leaves on these little branches. Okay, the last little leafy element I want to add in, a pop of this lighter green just to make everything a little more consistent. So create a brand new layer and grab that green color. And this one's just going to be a single leaf to change it up a little bit. And now we're just going to finish this off with some really simple little flowers. So create a brand new layer. We're going to grab my pink and this brush, this number one brush, makes it really easy. You can just put in five dots and this is a pressure sensitive brush so you'll get different thicknesses of the petals depending on how much pressure you're putting on your stylus. And then to bring the yellow of the lemons into the background I'm going to paint the stamens of these flowers the yellow. So I'll create a brand new layer, grab the bright yellow and just put a little dot inside each one of these flowers. So we've got the base of our pattern design. Now what I'm going to do is group everything we've done together, including the background color. So group that and toggle it up. Now I'm going to duplicate this and turn off the bottom group. That is just so I have a layered version of this design if I ever need to come back to it. In order to convert this into a pattern, we have to have it flattened. We have to flatten all of our artwork so we won't be able to access those layers anymore. Now I'm going to flatten this group, so tap on the layer thumbnail and choose flatten, and now all of this is together on one layer. Next we need to set up our grid and our selections so we can really easily create a repeat pattern. So I'm going to create a brand new layer. I'm going to toggle off my design temporarily that way we can focus on setting up our squares. So the first thing we're going to do is turn on my drawing guide. So come to your wrench, go to canvas, toggle on drawing guide and hit edit drawing guide. Down here you want to increase your grid size to max so you only have one vertical line and one horizontal line. If it's difficult to see, increase your thickness and your opacity and you'll be able to see it a lot better. Hit done. Now I'm going to drop any color you want into the background. Let's start with the pink and I'm going to select it and this part's really important. You want to make sure uniform is toggled on and make sure nothing else down here is selected except for snapping. You want snapping turned on otherwise this isn't going to work. So I'm going to drag from this corner until it snaps to this square. So I'm making a smaller square right here. So I'm just bringing it up and it snaps. And you kind of see those yellow crosshairs appear when it does snap, and that's all I need to do. Create a brand new layer, grab a different color, drag it on, and now we're going to bring this corner up until it snaps. Okay, release. On to the next color. Bring this one in. And our last one. So now we need to create selections for each one of these boxes. So let's start with the pink one. I'm going to tap on the layer thumbnail and choose select. Down here, make sure none of this is selected. Just add down here. If you have color fill turned on, you want to turn that off and redo this. So once you have this selected, I'm going to hit save and load and just hit the plus. And that's all you want to do. And now we're going to come to our next square. Tap on the green square layers thumbnail and choose select. Down here, hit save and load, hit the plus. You can see now we have two selections. Come back to your layers, go to the blue one, tap on the layer thumbnail, select, save and load, hit the plus. Last one, the start green, tap in the layer thumbnail, select, save and load, hit the plus. All right, we're all done with these squares now. We don't need them anymore. We can delete them all and deselect. Next, we're going to come to our pattern. I also like having a copy of my flattened artwork, so slide it to the left, choose duplicate, turn off our copy, and we're going to work with this one. With this one selected, we're going to come and hit our selection icon. Down here, we're going to hit save and load and choose selection number one. So once that's selected, you should be able to see some diagonal lines on the rest of it, except for in square one. Come to your wrench, add category, hit cut, and then hit paste. And now we have just that square on its own layer. 
we're going to come back down to the previous layer that we were just on. We're basically breaking this all up into four squares. So with that layer selected, hit the selection, save and load, tap on selection two, wrench, cut, paste. Now we've got that one on its own layer. Last one. With that layer selected, hit the selection icon, save and load, selection three, wrench, cut, paste. Technically you didn't need the fourth selection right here because we have this one on its own, but it's nice to get into that repetitive motion. That way all these steps will start sticking. Okay, so now we have all of these on their own layer. So it's exactly what we want. So let's label all these. This top one, I'm just going to relabel one. This one's number two. So I've labeled these one, two, three, and four. And if you're familiar with how a seamless repeat, a basic one works, what we need to do is drag these two to this side. We need to drag these two to this side, and then we need to drag the top two down and the bottom two up. I'm going to make it a lot easier for you. So just make sure you're following the steps and have your layers labeled the same as me, and everything will be fine. The purpose of this is to make sure our sides will repeat and our tops and our bottoms are going to repeat. Okay, so what I'm going to do is select layer one and layer three. So toggle that over. So these two are selected and they're going to move over here and we need to make sure that they snap when they move. So select them and we have to pay really close attention when we're moving it over. You see those yellow lines? We wanna wait until we get the vertical ones too, right there. So I have a horizontal one and a vertical one so I know that I'm perfectly aligned and then I can release. Now I'm going to grab two and four, drag those to the left the same way. Wait for it to snap. There we go. Now we're going to grab these top two and move them down. So grab one and grab two, drag that down, and then grab three and four and bring those up. So this is what our pattern square looks like right now. So you can see that this part will repeat with this part and this side will repeat with this side. But the center part is looking pretty boring. So what I like to do is erase some of these elements, put an additional lemon right there, and then we'll be done. So what I need to do is merge all of these squares together. So four through one, we're just going to pinch them. And now these are all merged together. I'm going to create a brand new layer, drag it underneath, the number four layer. And we're just going to fill it with our background color because we're going to be erasing some of this away. So drag that in and now that's behind it. Go to layer four. I'm going to grab my eraser and I'm going to erase away some of these elements to make room for an additional lemon. We can add these back in too. So I'm going to create a brand new layer, grab my yellow, return back up to my 21 brush, and let's see, I have this one going this way, this one going this way, this one up. So I'm going to make this one just slightly turned in this direction. Let's move it over a little bit, put in the top and bottom. And I think it can be a little wider. Let's put on the top leaves. So I've got my lime green first, and I had this one coming up behind it. So I'm going to put this one behind. Same steps as before. We're just applying it to this one lemon this time. We're gonna put on those highlight dots. And then I'm also going to add in that shading. Okay, and then we just need to fill in the area around it. So I'm just creating a brand new layer every time I add in a new element. That way, if I wanna change it or adjust it, I can still do that. So now I got my pattern square. So now I'm going to merge all of this together. So you can pinch multiple times if you need to. And now I've got this all on one layer and this is my official pattern square. You can keep repeating in the same steps that we did before if you wanna check this again. But for the sake of time and showing you how this all works, I'm going to test it now as a large scale repeat. I'm going to take this and create a duplicate. So remember we have this original, the base that we did, and this is the adjusted one that's repeatable on all the sides. You just wanna make sure if you're adding extra elements in, like I just did with the flowers and the leaves, you don't wanna bleed off 
the edge at all because then it's going to mess up the symmetry on the top and the bottom or the sides. So anything you add or edit, make sure it's contained within the square and it's not touching any of the edges. That's super important. Okay, so let's make a duplicate of this because we're going to shrink it down and make it really large. So I'm going to turn off that extra copy that we've got and this layer right here, we're just going to shrink it down. We still have our drawing guide turned on. So I'm going to drag it up once again like we did before wait until it snaps and then release. And now we can just duplicate this layer, drag it over, wait for it to snap. There we go. And now I can just duplicate these. So I'm going to slide it over, group them, and then duplicate that group. And then I can drag them both at the same time. And just look at that snapping. And we can turn off our drawing guides. And there we go, there is our full repeat. And we can zoom in here and you can see we don't have any gaps or weird lines, everything is a solid color. So you can't even tell where the squares were. And that is the goal of it. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you next time.